Hi, this is Andrew Wolf, and in this video I'm going to be introducing the hematologic system. Uh, so I want to start out by talking about the functions of blood. Okay, so the functions of blood really, um, in order to understand the functions of blood, we really need to look down at the capillary and tissue level. So here I'm going to draw a little capillary with endothelial lined with endothelial cells and we have an arterial end and a venous end and they're essentially the same but one is coming from the artery and then one is emptying into a vein right now an outside of the capillary we have cells and the cells are bathed in plasma okay so these are happy little cells and they've got their little nuclei and various intracellular components and again they are bathed with intracellular fluid and the intracellular fluid is these cells internal environment, right? These cells can't get up and leave, they can't go hunting for food, they can't go searching for water. Um, they are dependent on what is available to them in the nutrients around the, the nutrients and electrolytes and things that is uh, provided in the liquid space around them with it, which is the intracellular fluid, right? So this intracellular fluid provides everything the cell needs. So it provides nutrients, it provides oxygen, and the right uh, concentration of electrolytes, and acid base. Okay, so everything is exactly right for this or organism. So how does it stay right? Well, this cell is constantly using oxygen, right? So it's sucking oxygen out of this intracellular space, and then it's constantly creating carbon dioxide. So we're ch the cell, by its use, is changing the concentration of some things. And it's also constantly pumping out sodium and it's constantly pumping in potassium right so it's always changing the concentration of electrolytes and because some of the metabolites that it's creating are acidic it is pumping out hydrogen ions and decreasing pH right so if this cell is left with this fluid around it, it will die because all of these things will become in unbalanced and the cell will no longer be able to survive. So it's dependent on constant mixing from the hematologic system. So inside the hematologic system, we have red blood cells that are floating through this capillary and then we also have plasma and the entire purpose of the hematologic system is to constantly provide a new mixture of fluid for the intracellular fluid so the fluid comes out on the arterial end and it goes back in on the venous end Okay, so the main function of the hematologic system is to maintain the homeostasis of the intracellular fluid. And in a way this seems obvious, but it's, um, it's a concept that you really need to understand intuitively in order to understand the hematologic system. So how does it do this? How does it maintain the homeostasis of the intracellular fluid? Well, 
it carries nutrients to and from the, to the cells so glucose lipids um, proteins or peptides amino acids and vitamins okay and then it carries wastes away from the cell so that would include carbon dioxide and other um, toxic chemicals so break down products of nucleic acids break down products of proteins creatinine which is a breakdown product of, um, of muscle tissue okay and um, and it carries oxygen to the cell obviously to the intracellular fluid And then um, beyond these direct um, contributions to maintaining the internal environment, the other functions include providing intracellular communication because the blood is constantly moving and constantly mixing. So it provides a medium for intracellular communication for endocrine from organ to organ or paracrine from cell to cell or a sub um, a subtype of paracrine would be cytokine um, it's also involved in protection and defense and this is largely again because it's the major um, it's the major place for transportation to occur in the body so um, this allows cells and immunologic proteins to move from place to place in the body to where they are needed and then self repair mechanism and um, so that if the um, hematologic system begins to leak out through da a damaged vessel um, it initiates the clotting cascade and repairs itself. Okay, so these here are the major functions of the hematologic system. The left side really relates to things that directly um, impact the homeostasis of the intracellular environment, and the right side is really sort of supportive roles. Okay, so now that we've talked about the purpose of, of blood, I want to talk about the different components of blood. So here we have a test tube, and if we fill it up with blood and we spin it down in, in a centrifuge, um, then we will separate out the major components of the blood. Now, in an average person, there's about, if we had a 10 ml tube full of blood, we would have about 45% uh, 45% would be um, made up of red blood cells. So the first 4.5 mLs of this test tube, when spun down, would, would equal the erythrocytes, or red blood cells. Now this is equivalent to hematocrit, right? So the crit here would be 45%. So the blood up, blood is made up of about 45% red blood cells, and um, for a healthy person, that um, that makes about five million red blood cells per mL in the body. Okay, now. The next component 
is a small component that makes up about 1% of blood and it's called the buffy coat when it's spun down and the buffy coat is made up of white blood cells and again this is about 1% and it really again depends on the patient a little bit and um, so this is going to be white blood cells and platelets So this body component, when it's spun down, are the cellular components of the blood. The cellular components of the blood are red blood cells, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets, which are technically not cells, they are cellular components, they're little pieces of cells. And then the remaining, about 55% of the blood, is going to be Uh, plasma. Okay. Plasma. Now plasma is mostly water. It's 91% water. And then it is about 7% proteins. And and it is about 2% dissolved nutrients. And then the rest are things like electrolytes and tiny bits of hormones and things like that. Okay, so proteins we can further subdivide into albumin which is about 70% of all proteins. And then we have coagulation proteins. And complement proteins. And immunoglobulins. Uh, coagulation proteins and um, make up about 10 percent. Immunoglobulins make up about 7 to 10 percent and then complement and other immunologic proteins make up around 10 percent. So again albumin is the major protein within plasma and it's um, it's the major component that makes up, that um, creates oncotic pressure and keeps fluid inside the vasculature. Coagulation proteins, we'll talk about um, further in this uh, module when um, we talk about the coagulation cascade. Um, Complement and immunoglobulins, we talked about when we talked about um, immunology and defense. Okay, that's it for this introduction to the hematologic system. If you, um, if you want quick and easy access to the rest of the hematologic slides, you can just click here on this link and it will bring you to the hematologic channel directly. And please take a moment to um, provide feedback by giving a thumbs up or a thumbs down and leaving a comment or a question if you'd like. Thank you.